Okay, so it, uh, it seems that we are live, at least according to <laughs> uh, what the live streaming is it. Uh, as always, I'm going to start with the question uh, to everybody whether you can hear me and if you can hear me good, because I, uh, I always want to ensure that I don't start talking uh, and then nobody's hearing me. So if you can add a comment uh, there, let me know. I I think I'm noticing uh, that the light is very bright, but there's nothing I can do right now anymore. So we're just going to continue. Hi, Johan. Hi. Uh, thank you for hearing me. So um, I'm going to put the headsets aside because I don't need them. What are we going to do today? We're going to do something super simple. So I kind of was playing around. I drew this flower two days ago and I had this idea in my mind. Uh, let me put the chat up because I need to see on the chat who is in the chat. Oh, hi. Uh, and I had this idea in my mind that um, I'm going to do two colors only. So this is going to be this yellow and the gray which is paints gray um, and I'm going to do yellow around the flower and then the flower in the middle the flower is going to be gray with the leaves and everything is going to be gray and just with a little bit of smidgens of yellow or a little bit of green but then the main focus is going to be the main contrast is going to be that we're going to have some areas of really bright and uh, crazy yellow and then the other part is going to be green. And this is what I call spotlight. Or Okay, some people call spotlight different different stuff. But uh, this is what I call spotlight. Like I'm really bringing the flower and everything into, into play. Um, haven't tried it before. So it's the first time I'm trying it. But I had this idea in my mind. And I really, I really like to work on stuff that is in my mind. The ideas that are in my mind. So we're going to start with uh, mixing some colors. Um, and I'm going to use uh, just two colors. One is Payne's Gray. Uh, another one is the New Gamboge from Daniel Smith. It's more of a orange yellow. And I'm going to mix into the orange yellow uh, Payne's Gray to make it really more muted. And that's going to be nice. And then I'm just going to use Payne's Gray. Yeah. So I hope everybody can hear me good and everybody's uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to bring the palette and I'm going to apologize for the noise here. So I hope you can see. Uh, I'm using these two oils and I'm going to use a very big brush to add color. So I'm going to take from the new gamboge. I'm going to add it onto my palette. I'm going to, I want to make a really big puddle because the idea is when you start, when you start uh, watercoloring you want to have the color ready and you want to have enough color to suit your needs so you don't have to mix the colors afterwards um, but how is everybody I hope everybody's uh, okay I I actually today I wanted to talk about the day I was awesome um, and let's start with yesterday yesterday so around noon it was raining um, in the, I live in the Netherlands, but it was still quite uh, above zero, let's say. Uh, I think it was four degrees or six degrees above zero. We, uh, me and my husband, we ran um, and it was starting to get a bit cold, right? Because we ran in the, in the, um, uh, in the parts, um, Look, you see how I added paints gray and it immediately darkened it a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to need a paper that I can test on the color. So I'm going to use this scrap scrap paper. Um and then okay, I think I want it a bit more darker than this. Um towards the end of the afternoon yesterday, it started snowing. And it started snowing and it kept snowing <laughs> so i'm not gonna uh i'm gonna keep saying this it kept snowing the the entire night we were up we were up until 
let's say maybe two o'clock last night because I was playing, I was playing World of Warcraft. For those of you who don't know, this is what I was doing. Um, I like to play World of Warcraft a lot. Um, and yeah, the snow started to, you know, form quite a, quite a thick layer. Uh, when we woke up this morning, and I'm going to tell you what happened last night also, but when we woke up this morning, I uh, was, uh, oh, did I, did I, did I go too dark? I think I went too dark. Okay, this is too dark, too dark of a yellow. I need a little bit different yellow, more yellow in it. Um, when we woke up, was really like, we didn't realize it's going to be so much snow uh, put in. So our entire garden or, was covered, our door was covered. Um, yeah, it was kind of stormy. So it was pretty windy, pretty stormy. Uh, making myself a puddle here. Um, it starts to lighten up, so I'm going to add a little bit more new gamboge to it. And I'm hoping that I'm lighting it up more. Yeah, it starts to be good. Okay, I like this color. Uh, and we decided, okay, because we haven't seen snow, we have not seen snow almost this year or last year was just like half a day, it snowed a bit. Okay, cool. I made my yellow and now I'm going to just make my um, paints gray here. Um, we decided to go out. Of course, it is quite um, cold outside. So it was uh, minus five, but the field temperature they were saying is minus 15. I disagree with that. It wasn't really minus 15, uh, but it was pretty cold. So we, we packed ourselves in like really pack it in and then we got out initially we thought it's not going to be anybody on the road but actually there was quite a lot of people on the road uh quite a lot of people um because there's like a, the most excitement that you saw in since forever <laughs> everybody's in a lockdown and and so on so nothing really happened anymore um Okay, so I mix my colors and now I'm going to move this one there. And those are the two colors that I'm going to use, okay? I'm not going to use the number six yet anymore. I'm going to just use um, some smaller brushes. And let me see which one is the smallest one that I can have. I have a number one. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. So we went out and we went to the lake. We have a lake here. Here nearby and the wind was tremendous like it was blowing and and everything but it was pretty awesome I have to say the scenery was nice we have a small forest in the park and uh, we've been going there we walked through the forest it was so nice I made so many pictures like um, like the snow was sitting on the trees and it was just like wonderful um, there were many people with doggies around, <laughs> which is so funny because the doggies were having so much fun in the, in the snow. Um, we just walked around, walked till the lake and back. We saw the beach, beach was also covered, full snow, everything was in snow, but it was just wonderful, wonderful weather, even though it was like windy and everything I think I have I hadn't had so much fun in quite a while so yeah this was this was the day today so this is the yellow okay um, the funny part was yesterday night uh, we were watching outside on the window because somewhere around one o'clock uh, there was nobody, right? There's nobody around. <laughs> but around one, um, we noticed that there was some movement outside. And we were looking on the window. 
and we saw a fox. So usually we see the fox, um, there's, there's really raggy fox that we see, <laughs> and uh, it is usually in the forest where we run in, in the morning, right? Um, so I'm just picking up a little bit of gray, and I'm just going to add the shadows, okay? That's it, and I'm going to really spread it around with water, because now it looks more like blackish, but trust me, I know. Um, what usually happens is we see we see the fox, but this time it just got in, so we are much more inland than um, um, than the forest. So it it went in and it kind of hid in the bushes um, in front of the house here. Um, I'm pretty sure that maybe was looking for food or was trying to find better shelter. Although I always thought that the forest had enough sheltering material. It was enough sheltering the forest to um, for him, for the fox to have a place to sit or to stay, right? I mean, I don't understand why I would need to to come here. But that was pretty fun that we saw the foxy. And it doesn't look like the foxes that people usually draw. <laughs> Which is so funny. Because you think, oh, it's going to be like so nice. And uh, it was really shaggy fur and everything. Um, I'm going to add the lines at the end, okay? I'm not going to add lines right now. I'm just going to add color right now. Um... So this was our day. Our day was today pretty much going out and, and fixing. Oh, when I came, I had to shovel lots of snow. So my husband also helped a lot and because I was afraid it was still snowing. And I was afraid that, you know, by tomorrow, <laughs> so snow is going to be much trickier to um, take out. So I kind of shoveled the entire snow, making a path because uh, tomorrow maybe the post office comes. We have some things that needs to be delivered. So I just wanted to make sure that we have enough space. So this was the adventure for today. Only now, like half an hour ago, it stopped snowing, um, which is interesting. Um... So yeah, that that's the whole story with the snow. We haven't had snow like this in a while. I mean, I just barely remember this. When was the last time in the Netherlands that we had snow like this? Uh, it usually snows for like half a day and then you have a day at the most with extra snow. And then that's kind of it. But we haven't had in a while like this, like a snow snor sto snowstorm, I would say. And the funny part is that it's going to be interesting next week because it's going to be quite cold the entire week. Um, and it's going to go up to minus 10, minus 12. So that's going to be... That's going to be interesting. Um, then then what that means is that the snow will stay. The snow will definitely stay. And it's not going to go away. Um, in a way, what you do, what, what you could do with this technique, because um, I'm, adding, I'm adding the gray here and then I'm going to add a little bit of smidges of yellow and so on is you can treat the gray as the shadows and you can do like grisel, the technique in grisel, and then you can just come on top uh, with any other color and then these parts will remain darker, right? The only problem I have is I can't do that with this one because this gray is liftable. So I could have, uh, what you need to do is you need to ensure that the color that you use for the grisel technique, uh, maybe I'll I'll do it. it's a color that is not liftable um like a neutral tint like a staining color you need a staining color 
this is not a staining color so that's why um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the petals uh, one by one and I'm going to darken the parts where where the petals meet each other that's where the darkening needs to happen okay so I was actually talking with my husband and I was happy that I work from home right now because I was thinking if this would have happened when I had to go the next day, you had to go to work and then the trains don't work or they're very late because the trains cannot cope with, with the snow, right? I have no idea why ever the trains cannot cope with snow. And um, it, it would have been really not nice to go to work when in this weather um would have taken us way too long we did see people uh doing exercises in this weather with the snow um my crossfit gym also they were doing exercises outside uh that was an I really interesting interesting sight i didn't dare yet because i thought there's going to be too much ice underneath so i i didn't want to um, injure myself but we are going to have to go for a run this week this next week so yeah we'll see uh, hopefully everything you know doesn't transform into a slush uh, and then we can um, we can all have some fun together lots of people would sleds Lots of people with kids I saw today, which is so nice to see them, you know, have some fun. Uh, it's nice to see the families going out together and everybody was distance, distancing themselves, which is which is really good, right? Um, they were in their own, you know, family bubble, which is nice. So I think all in all was a really nice, uh, it's a really nice weather for families and for stuff and I was remembering um actually I was remembering when I was young and it, w it used to snow a lot and it used to be like the two meter snow and I used to go to my uncle and my cousins and my uncle and my cousins would take us out the full day uh, with the sled and we would have had fun with the sled and we would only go back home when Everything that we had was wet, which is like, <laughs> it's super amazing uh, to say this. But like, I remember going with with my pants and my everything was wet, like my socks, my gloves. And only then, because it was getting way too cold, we were like, OK, now we agree with our uncle to go inside the home. And sometimes the snow was so big. Um, that we were getting lost in the snow and our uncle had to fish us out by the legs from the snow because uh, we used to go into like the really deep places. Um, yeah, there's like fun memories that I remembered. And it's so, it's so sad that we don't have those kind of winters anymore where you can do this because um, nowadays the winters are pretty much that's it it's like one week of this type of snow and you know nothing <laughs> actually my flowers were blooming in the garden um, I have tulips and hyacinths in the garden and they were pretty much um, the leaves were all out um, everything was blooming now they're all covered um, so let's see if they survive um, I don't think the flowers were expecting this type. Um, from what I know is that I I think it will be okay because the snow is covering them. And snow is sometimes acts like a sort of blanket, you know. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, anyway. This is my idea with the Griselle tonight, and um, 
I thought that tonight is Sunday, so I could I could spend some time painting um, and in general enjoying the fact that I'm inside the house and it's uh, super like uh, nice. Oh, hello, Adriana! Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the stream. So for those who are just joining, we are just talking about the snowy day that I had and the folks that I saw. Um, and just in general, it was a pretty nice day. And we went out and we had some fun. So I'm happy with today. Um, everything was so pretty. Sometimes I'm just... I just feel like I want to cry because everything is so pretty, pretty and white. And you see all the doggos playing around and, you know, having fun. It's, it's really nice. Uh, I tried, oh yeah, I tried to, to get my cat to play with ice or with, with the snow. Um, I even got him the snow in a bowl, um, in the living room he just doesn't want to touch it he gets scared of it initially uh we left our uh our winter boots outside um as in in the hallway and it had snow on it and he tried to sniff it and then he scared himself for some reason and then he's refusing to touch anything that has to be <laughs> uh oh lovely to be here as usually oh, okay thank you so much Adiana. <laughs> um, yeah, so my cat really doesn't like snow. He got confused. He got confused by the whiteness, by everything. He's like, I don't understand, mommy. What is all the snow? What's going on? Why? You know, why is the wind howling and so on? <laughs> da, da, da. And yeah, my other cat doesn't really care. My female cat, maybe because she's a female cat, she's not scared of anything. She was just watching on the window. She saw the trees moving and everything, so she's a bit more like, oh, okay, it's not not really anything out of the ordinary. Um, then she went back to sleep. Yeah, my male cat, only now they started a little bit winding down. He was a bit in distress because he didn't know what was going on, what was happening, you know. He's more of a rascal <laughs> than her. So far, so good. I think you can see it much better uh, onto the side. Right, I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to uh, switch to the side, and then you guys are not gonna see me, but you can see much better. I hope you can see here um, from the side. It's a it's a different view. Let's see where we can add a little bit more definition here and here. I hope uh, people can still hear me and, and and so on and then when this is done I'm going to start adding a bit of yellow and then we'll see how that looks like then we're gonna add the lines okay I'm not gonna add to everything I'm going to add here. Um, really where the petals meet each other. We need to add the darkest shade. That's why you need a tiny brush like this. Because you really need to get into the details here. Just 
just spreading it around. Okay. And now you don't see me anymore. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's see. I can see this one. And now you can see me. Okay. Hoping I'm not making you guys too crazy by switching scenes, but I thought it was nice to see only from one side. It is sometimes useful. This will be quite rough. Um, I'm starting to warm up to the idea of not having everything super smooth. Um, I usually don't like that. I, I like the colors to blend properly into each other and everything to be smooth. But if you do an exercise like this, it helps because it helps you learn where kind of the shadowy areas are. Okay. So that's why it's important that I do this exercise. It's for me, it's for my learning, but also for you. See if you would like this type of um, exercise. Um, a lot of people use monochromatic uh, things so to learn about shadows. So they would tend to use like only blue and then they, or only yellow. Um, I would say, yeah, whatever fits with your design, uh, go ahead. For me, I, I like the gray. Okay. Uh, where else am I here above? I'm gonna add some more. It's gonna really pop when we're gonna do the leaves and then we're gonna do the yellow dots. That's when it's gonna really pop. And you will see kind of what I saw in my mind. Sometimes I have these things in my mind <laughs> and I just can't get them out. I, I have to try them out because once it's in my mind, it's never out. So then I really have to to do it. Otherwise, I, I keep thinking about it and then I can't do anything else but think about it. So, I am leaving quite some white, and that's okay. Wait, I'm not going to touch the flower. I need to let it dry out, okay? I need to let it dry out. Yeah, we can hear it. Okay, cool. Uh, people were hearing me. Mm, I'm going to add now gray to the stem, to the leaves, and everything else, okay? So, I'm just going to add a little bit to the stem. Um, what am I using today? I'm using my HR sketchbook today because this is where I happened to create my sketch. Um, don't remember why I chose this. I sometimes sketch in, in different parts. And then, yeah, I just, I just sketched in this sketchbook, so... And the flower is looking so nice that I decided, well, uh, might as well use the sketchbook. Um, and it's going to be fine. It is 100% cotton. Of course, not, not as high quality as the arches. Arches can really take a beating. Trust me. Um, but still really nice. You can blend things. Um, what I do notice is that it depends, really depends on the color. Um, whether or not once it's in the paper, you can still blend it. Um, I notice that on this, this one, the yellows blend better. Um, gray, well, you have to be very careful 
and you have to blend it out very fast so that's what I'm noticing it can dry out really fast and then becomes a bit more streaky so that's why um, but that's okay it, it could be that what I had in my mind <laughs> really doesn't work um, it can very well be but I'm pretty sure I can I can fix whatever it's wrong with it um, so don't worry um, I've noticed that I'm gravitating towards a certain type of flowers and the flowers that I'm gravitating towards is the ones that have many many leaves um, uh, not many also many petals so not the simple petal ones um, but the ones that have like like the zinnia here this is a zinnia and it has many petals um, I did the bait today what uh, I should have um, maybe done a, a winter wonderland scene today or something because it's winter and it's snowing and I thought hmm but in the end I had this sketch and I, I always want to want to do the sketches um, we'll see how we can create contrast I am interested in uh, seeing this um, and it will be fun to mix some or to glaze some colors on top of this okay um, Yeah, but um, other than that, I really like winter, to be honest. It's really nice. Um, I, I always thought that I'm, if I have to choose between warm and cold weather, I, I would choose cold weather because in cold weather, you can control better. You have... Um, yeah, we are heating and everything, and you can definitely control it much better. So then you don't overheat in the summer, even with the air call, still doesn't work properly. And then you get overheated and then summer is much, much uh, worse than... And I'm saying here then winter. In winter, even though it snows, it's still quite comfortable in the house. I don't need to go all the way here to uh, do anything. So I think I prefer the winter. But then again, people might say that they prefer summer because... You actually can see colors and you can see things. Okay, just a few leaves more and then we start adding the yellow, okay? Everywhere. You can already see it taking shape. And then we can also add the lines, okay? <laughs> um, I'm adding actually only underneath the lines that I know I'm going to make with black. I'm just adding color and then I'm blending it out. It's really just painting with shadows. Okay. And then I'm going to add for these tiny leaves, I'm just going to add this midget here. And then I'm going to... Uh, you probably don't hear me anymore because I talk to myself. I start muttering. <sighs> this is so weird. I, I, I forgot how to behave with people because I haven't seen so many people in a long time. So I just mutter to myself. And I 
I'm thinking to myself and muttering and then <laughs> this is how uh, you end up with m not hearing me what I'm so saying because it's probably that I'm just saying it to myself okay 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 this is all the gray that I have so I'm going to switch to the full uh, is so you can see um, how it looks like you might think oh my god this looks horrible why have you done that what's going on here don't worry when you add the black lines and when you add also the other colors it's going to look pretty pre pretty i am let's say 80 percent sure of that <laughs> 80 percent sure i don't know how do you call this 80 percent sure uh yeah 80 percent sure okay uh yellow 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 i'm going to add yellowish um again just a little bit of yellow okay i'm gonna use the same yellow everywhere yeah i'm just gonna add it uh, it's gonna give it a really nice depth of color so now you could kind of see how how grisaille would work because you would you would really put the yellow on top and then where the gray was then you have the shadows so then you don't have to worry about anything anymore okay da 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 Uh, the nice part about live streams is that if I don't like it, then it's going to be only on the live stream. <laughs> I can always say I am not putting this one as a content on the channel. But I think it's important that we keep it because this is how everybody is learning, right? This is how everybody sees this um, like what I'm doing here and then you can learn maybe to either not do what I'm doing because it's too much or you know take note I saw this technique be made by um, another youtuber um, and she was doing this for um, bottle of oil like uh, olive oil and it turned out really nice but initially yeah you have to go a little bit on fate that the technique is going to work out because trust me there's a lot of fate involved in this really nice and then you know on the leaves we're gonna add we're gonna add quite some nice greens and then we're just gonna add the lines uh, maybe this is a bit of a right different approach because normally you would do the lines and you will try to really stay within the lines and now you don't now you are like uh, you don't have lines to guide you so you have to kind of do no line water coloring of course no line water coloring and live stream are not necessarily compatible because usually on no line water coloring it takes you a long time to create the depth that you want um, it does create like really beautiful results though so I know that Christina Werner she does a lot of this no line watercoloring uh really beautiful and she even has uh, things that are uh, almost uh, live like uh, sometimes like real time videos um those are nice to you know uh view
Okay. Some are more yellow, some are lesser yellow. I think they are coming along very well. And uh, once we add a little bit of green, you're going to see more contrast. And then when we're going to add the yellow around stuff, that's when it's going to pop. And this is exactly what I'm waiting for. Okay. Mm, dun, dun. We we going to decide whether we go in certain areas, even darker with more uh, darker yellow and so on. Yeah. Uh, now, which green should I use? Uh, I think I will use uh, rich green gold. I want to keep it to the same kind of um, uh, idea. And this is a, uh, a green that is very much into yellow. That's why it's called rich green gold, okay? So that's the one, the thing that I'm going to add. And we're gonna add this part, okay. What else has happened in the world that we want to talk about uh, in the last since my last live stream? Um, I've decided to take some time um, away from doing anything. Um, what happens is sometimes I get really tired because I also work, and I've been in the in the burnout situation before. Okay. And I know, I know how it feels when you start getting, getting run or start getting overwhelmed. So I kind of learned to see the patterns. And then I've decided that uh, the patterns are there <laughs> and I need to take some time. So I actually slept quite, quite a bit this week. Um, and I just, I just rested. I just didn't want to, um, you know, do more than um, is needed. And that is okay, even with this channel. Sometimes I might decide that, um, you know, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go and um, have some rest. Um, it's more important for me to do that. Mental health is more important for me than actually um, uh, stressing about it and, and doing it. And I learned this the hard way. Trust me, it's no fun having a burnout. Um, and I would, I would urge anybody that uh, is feeling any of these symptoms when you, you get really tired, when your mind stops working... Um, I'm urging you to take rest because um, nobody's going to help here. Nobody's going to help you. Trust me. Um, you, you can only help yourself and only help yourself if you take care of yourself. So, you know, take my example. Don't stress about it but you know take rest I'm gonna do some more greens I mean a lot more bad things can happen if you don't do that so you don't wanna especially in with corona times and everything just adding itself up just it's not very good um, when I don't have the lines <laughs> it becomes becomes very weird for me uh, this exercise is teaching me to let go <laughs> Because I am a perfectionist and I like to do everything perfect and I don't think I can 
at this point in time to do everything perfect it no longer is possible so I need to just learn to let go which might be a bit weird and difficult uh, but I can't have perfection <laughs> not anymore okay when we're gonna add the black lines then we're gonna see right uh, what's going on and so on um okay now i've done all of that i just want to go in with the yellow all around here um and and do the circle there's a yellow circle all around and there's a yellow circle here and a yellow circle here and let me show you how the circles are gonna be here kind of like doodling huh? that's that's what I noticed that's okay I was gearing myself up for our next week because next week is again going to be a pretty hard week and I was trying to gear myself up a little bit uh, rest and then managed to you know To get through the next week in a good piece um, and the reason why I'm saying next week is gonna be much more fuller is because of work as well um, we are in full fledged uh, you know middle of the quarter so yeah we need to do a lot of things um, you can see how this is going to be. So this is going to be yellow all around here. So I'm going to... Um, I'm using a bigger brush because it gives me a bit more control. But also because I don't want to have like hard edges. And I need something that holds a lot of water. So that whenever we're going to... Uh, I'm going to add things here. It's going to not form a hard edge because the water is going to still pool and I can blend it out right so here's why I really like this yellow and surprisingly now I'm realizing it's the same yellow as my jacket that I had with me today and I was saying wow the, this yellow really looks really nice uh, onto the uh, background of the snow it was really looking awesome with the snow in the, in the background so you notice that I'm adding more and more paint so that I have time to go onto this paint onto the small areas here in between the leaves um, and the upper part is not going to dry out okay that's why I added more paint I'm going to go around this leaf I'm gonna round up the circle here I'm gonna add more okay and I know it's a jarring color but it's nice we're gonna deepen the colors afterwards we're gonna add some more greens and some more different type of greens it's all warm colors so and then we're gonna add the black lines that's what's going to really make them stand up in a way maybe i should have just done the black lines and the yellow and that would have been even more popping hmm okay something to learn something to know for next time um, by the way, this is a very good exercise if you want to have really like brush control. If you want to learn how to control your brush and how to control color, I think one of the best exercises that I could I could tell you to is try to make some more complicated sh shapes and try to paint around them. 
that's how you're gonna learn brush control that's how you're gonna learn not to get hard edges that's how you're gonna do it so the idea is make lots of leaves or flowers and try to just paint around it um, I can guarantee you that in a few weeks of doing that you're gonna have perfect brush control I'm so glad I mixed this color in advance because it's so pretty and I would have been not been able maybe to make the same shade again it's always you always going to end up doing a, a lighter shade or so let me see where would the, the circle will come like this so then that means that I have here also yellow I'm trying to follow the circle line <laughs> although I don't have a circle line I'm trying to follow the circle <laughs> to make sure that uh, you know we have enough yellow everywhere uh, and this is the last part that I'm doing here I mean the last part that I'm doing with the yellow of course because there's still a lot to be done here and a lot more yellow to add and all red okay and these are the leaves okay now you can see what I meant by spotlight because I'm really spotlighting this flower okay it's really like a sp spotlight I'm liking this kind of uh, blooming uh, things here they're really nice let's see if I can if I need to repair anything in the meantime I'm letting it dry out and I'm ready to answer any questions that you might have because I'm going to soon look up and see if there's any questions remaining. The problem with watercolors, if anybody's asking, <laughs> while you guys think of some colors, um, is that until the last moment when you're doing a watercolor piece, the piece really looks really crappy really bad <laughs> until the last moment and only in the last moment when you're gonna add the details and when you're gonna add the shading and everything that's when things start to look up that's when things start to actually be okay let me see i think i'm gonna use this one mm, i'm wondering if i should zap it with a heat tool. should i zap it with a heat tool? yeah let's zap it The funny part is Payne's Grey is granulating, so it's making the new gamboge, because I mixed Payne's Grey with the new gamboge, it's making it granulating as well. So this is like an interesting thing. Okay, now I'm going to add uh, the dark lines for now, and then we're going to see uh, what other pop of color. I'm thinking maybe some things require a little bit different pop of color. Okay, but let's see what comes out of it. Uh, I'm using my micron pen 
and this is a plastic nib and not a felt tip nib um, gives me a bit more control and um, the color you can see it much better on to this um, ruffle paper so that's why I'm using this one the felt tip usually you can't get enough uh, juiciness out of it so it w the felt tip works pretty well on things like hot press watercolor paper but not on this one okay we're gonna add way more details later on so gonna add this one I am really concentrated and really hard <laughs> so I'm sorry if I forget to talk I was watching actually somebody else's live stream today because I always like to watch other people's live stream and I think they all kind of do the same they forget that they're in a live stream because art is all-consuming so they sometimes just mumble to themselves or uh, just talk nonsense and then they're like oh yeah i was in a live stream <laughs> which i find so hilarious but yeah so true there's nothing i can do to prepare mentally maybe if i was a very good storyteller I could tell all sorts of stories and then that will be that will be actually good dum 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 so we were talking about the foxy and that I saw and how raggedy that foxy was. And I noticed in a lot of real wildlife pictures that actually the foxes are not as uh, shiny fur as what we draw them, like super red fur and everything. I mean, the only ones that I saw that are like really nice foxes, uh, there were some pictures of some foxes from Finland and uh, some of them were white but some of them were like foxes as we know them and those foxes were they, their fur was really shiny and i'm just wondering why um could it be the dye that they have or perhaps that here in the city the poor foxes here they don't have that much food and that's why they're they're more shaggy you know, like, uh, probably that's why. Uh, my city is next to a natural reservation. Reservation is it called? Uh, which is full of like uh, horses that are. Uh, wild horses and so on so it's a natural reserve but um, it's completely enclosed from the outside world so uh, animals from the outside cannot get in and that's why they don't necessarily have any like predators in there they were actually considering if they should add some wolves or some sort of predatorial um, because they only have deer and um uh, Uh, what else they have um, wild boars I saw um, and you might wonder how did you see that because it's a natural it's of enclosed so I saw horses wild boars and deers um, the funny part is through the reserve right next to it the train uh, passes so there's a train and it passes the reserve so you can kind of see from the train um, 
what's in the reserve and you can kind of see the animals that are running around you can't see everything because the reserve is super big uh, but this is how I got a glimpse of what's inside and then I was was wondering if they have wolves or foxes there but they don't so this fox I think maybe she would have much better chances if she was inside the natural reserve because then she would have much more things to eat um, but she's here in the city which is funny I saw hedgehogs and hedgehogs I kind of you know expect it uh, what I'm not expecting is foxes because we're not a mountainous town either we're a seaside town so how come how come there's foxes here? Where are they coming from? Uh, I hope you are enjoying the little stream here. This is one cool way to make your own muted colors if you would if you mix it with gray then that's where you can get all those muted colors that's where it's going to be super cool if you were wondering now the question is should you should you mute with gray or should you mute with black hmm, that's a interesting discussion that we should try to explore The, this French method of adding first the shadows and then adding all the others. Let me switch to the full uh, side because that's where you're going to see it really nice. Uh, there's another, uh, there's multiple versions. So there's the one with um, uh, gray, which is uh, called gr uh, grisaille. There's another one where you do your base layer with green and it's called Verdai and by the way these are used a lot in um, like oil paintings but they work similar in watercolor and I've always wanted to try it out okay I'm adding the lines now to the leaf. And now it really takes shape. Of course, I'm going to add more lines and more shading. But now it really pops. It's really nice flower. I like it. Um, so, So there's the one with the green, so Grisile, Verdile. Um, but the trick when you're when you're doing it with oils, it's easier because it's not gonna lift the color anymore, right? But or when you're gonna do it with acrylic, acrylic is kind of like plasticky, so you know there's no color lift. But when you're doing with watercolors, you have to remember if there's one thing you remember out of this video is um, you have to use a color that doesn't lift. So you have to use a staining color. This is where those watercolor properties <laughs> come in handy that you know which one is staining and which one is not. I think neutral tint is staining. Uh, some grays are staining. So, you know. As long as you can have one of those, then it should be fine. Okay. Tum tum tum. Let's just switch to the full frontal. Uh, and you can, you can still hear me. Yes, you can still hear me. Um,
the fun part is I saw this spotlight technique done, done differently. That's why I'm saying like some people call this a bit. Uh, what I did is inside the spotlight. So inside this circle, everything that was in had real color. Everything that was out had gray. And that's also a nice way of doing spotlight. And maybe, you know, in a future video, I'll try that one also. Lately it has been very quiet around because there's a curfew. So I don't hear much uh, on the outside. So it has been good for making videos as well <laughs> because then there's not much noise to account for, which is nice. So maybe I need to, you know, film some more videos. I would like to fi film more like day in my life videos. I think those will be super nice. Um, because those are the type of videos that I like to watch. Not always. Sometimes I get jealous of the people that I watch. Because <laughs> they have much better days than me. <laughs> jealousy, jealousy. Uh, I'm trying to switch up the leaves to make them more interesting, by the way. So, hence why they have a nicer form. I am taking inspiration out of the leaves that people do for tattoo designs. Man, those leaves are really nice. So, yeah. <laughs> And now we can do more. I'm going to do some lines randomly here. So I'm adding even more interest the piece especially here where you know the petals introduce themselves and I'm gonna add to the leaves of course as well I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, to be honest. And this is just in my sketchbook, right? So I didn't have high hopes for such a piece, but yeah, I'm starting to like it. The mustard, maybe in a way the mustard color is one of my favorite colors, to be honest. I mean, I'm buying clothes in this color, so... Maybe that's why I like it so much, that it's also one of my favorite colors. Okay. I'm not going to do the circle with black, okay? I'm just going to keep it non-black. Okay. Let's see if I can see you guys. Hi. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add even more details to the leaves. So. This is going to be more of a broken stamen. 
situation very light and barely touching and barely touching okay and now let's see some more some more lines here and there following the really the curve of the of the leaf or whatever you have here i think we should always follow the curve I hope you like this technique because I think it's really, really, really powerful. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow into these ones. Uh, but other than that, in a bit of a different type of green on these ones. More olive green. See if that works. And you don't have to overthink it on this type of designs. I think overthinking it and thinking, oh, it doesn't look perfect or it doesn't look... I think this looks perfectly fine and we don't need to overthink anything. Okay. It doesn't have to be realistic either. It just has to be, it has to give the impression that there are leaves here and everything. Okay. That's all. We are playing with perception. We're not playing with realities. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Let's add a little bit more yellow. Oh, this is gonna be a very yellow piece. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's try a different type of green. Uh, this more tallow green. Uh, just in some areas. Not everywhere. I'm not adding it everywhere, but you know, makes it a bit more contrasty than normal. Same way here. <laughs> I feel like singing, don't know why. I think painting makes me so happy <laughs> that it's amazing. This was another leaf. This green looks so pretty, contrasting with all the other. But it's amazing. Okay. Now you will see the power. And now the question is, do I go in with the same yellow or do I go in with a transparent orange? Let's try. What do we have to lose? I just want to create some contrast.
Okay, and now we're gonna blend it out, blend it out, blend it out. You can see that I told you that the yellowish colors, so that includes oranges, they are really liftable. You can really lift them up. They are the most liftable colors ever. Uh, gray and blues, not so much. But these ones, yeah, they are liftable. Okay. I think I did a good choice <laughs> of color. Okay. Transparent orange is, it's a transparent orange. <laughs> How do I explain this? Usually oranges you get by combining two colors, um, like a red and yellow in different quantities. But what happens a lot of times when you create an orange, it becomes very much um, opaque. And in watercolors, that is a problem because you don't want opaqueness. So... What you want to look for is a color that is called transparent orange because they were done by mixing two transparent colors, uh, which is why it's called transparent orange. This particular transparent orange, if I'm not mistaken, let me see, it's from Schminke. Yeah, uh, Schminke are very well known for their transparent colors. Um, all of their line is transparent. It's amazing how much transparent they have um, so hence why I have it because I didn't want this color to take away from the rest okay I'm going to add a little bit more of the green in certain parts of the leaves Darkening the greens. It's important. And that's about it. What do you guys think so far? Um, you think I went way overboard so we can see from IS. Look how pretty it looks like. Like with the orange and everything. It, it's so nice. And so much texture. So much texture. And prettiness. Okay. Uh, for the frontal, that's going to be it. Okay. <laughs> Marlena says, uh, I like the design and the contrast between the colors is wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much, Marlena. Um, this was kind of it so far. I am really enjoyed this process. I think I need to go a little bit more, even more bolder next time. Uh, bolder colors and, you know, um, greens. I just wanted, initially I just wanted two colors so I don't complicate myself. But I think uh, it really does require some contrast sometimes. Um, So, uh, thank you so much for watching so far, uh, for sticking till the end. I really appreciate it. 
you guys are basically my <laughs> uh, my biggest fans that I have. You are always here with me, and I really appreciate it. It makes me wanna, you know, go on and uh, create even more pretty stuff. This is going to be one of my favorite so far, <laughs> and maybe even uh maybe maybe it's even going to be uh, favorite enough so I can frame it. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something I'm going to do. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Adriana, oh, thank you so much. I think it's amazing. Whenever I'm blown away, you add something that makes it even better. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, that was it for tonight. Um, I kind of messed up my next page here. I should have put a cover or something. Um, this was it for tonight. I see you guys uh, next time. It's probably going to be on uh, Wednesday. And, you know, stay safe. I know it's snowing out there and it's really cold. But, yeah, you know, have fun. Uh, enjoy the weather and enjoy everything. Yeah, thank you so much. And see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.